live and open. And Congressman Gottheimer, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thanks for having me. I should say uh, you are the Congress. You're my congressman representing my district. So welcome. It's nice that's to see great. you. That's great. If you ever need anything, call me. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Let's talk about very broadly what you would like to hear from the State of the Union or what you expect to hear. Do you think that's, that's going to be a message kind of laying out the president's agenda? Or do you think that this is going to be more a message of bipartisanship, maybe one of working across the aisle? What, what are your thoughts? Well, I think we should expect both. I think part of this is going to be what he plans and he sets forth in the year ahead including infrastructure and how we're going to fix our crumbling roads and bridges. And also, of course, I'm hoping there's going to be an outreach to Democrats and Republicans for us to work together, which we, we sorely need so that we can actually, you know, keep our government open, make sure we get to a budget and, and move forward, because that's certainly what the country wants. You are co-chair of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Coalition. We've heard a lot about that group, uh, about things that they'd like to get done. But it's been a pretty tough time to, to see any bipartisan legislation. And this goes back uh, for several years at this point in Congress. Uh, how, how do you kind of put your best foot forward with that? Which uh, sort of legislative uh, approaches do you think are the most likely to win support from both sides of the aisle? Well, there's obviously been plenty of gridlock, but what we've found, and we're 24 Democrats and 24 Republicans, we get together every week, we're here in Washington, on issues like health care and stabilizing the individual marketplace and finally getting premiums down. It's an issue we've been working on. I'd like to hear what we're going to do next to actually stabilize that marketplace. Infrastructure is a big topic. We recently put out a report figuring out how we're going to deal with crumbling roads and bridges. You know, in New Jersey, as you know, eighth worst roads in the country. We've got to deal with that tunnel between New York and New Jersey, which is a real problem and a real threat to the whole regional economy. And you've got issues like immigration reform and getting the stock of border security deal done so that we can move forward there and make sure that our dreamers aren't thrown out of the country. You've got real topics, and those are the areas we've really been coming together around. And, of course, the budget. You know, we really want some certainty here. We can't run a uh, country this way every three months and punting and punting, we actually have to make some agreements there. But Congressman, you are 48 uh, leaders of, of a group of 435. And if you look at what's happened in any of the votes that have taken place, it has been almost straight down the line. You're one of just six people, again, who uh, with the Republicans on that continuing resolution. So what has to happen in order to see bipartisanship really uh, start to happen on a more frequent basis? Well, no, I think the difference between last year and this year, if, if you look at the Senate, of course, now you can't get things through with just 50 votes. You'll need 60. And in the House, I think there's a, a growing group of us that say you, you, you can't govern this way. And so in order for the president to get anything done on his agenda, you know, whether it's infrastructure or the budget, it's, we're all going to have to come together. You can't just rely on Republicans. You need to reach across the aisle. And that means, I believe, coming to the middle, you know, being fiscally responsible, being uh, looking at things differently instead of just trying to do things in a one-sided way, and that's what we're working around the clock in the Problem Solvers Caucus to do. But it takes you; it takes time. It takes reaching out. You can't just jam things through. You got to read. You got to see what actually what we want <laughs> as well. Having said that, and, though, you're, yeah. you're you're angry about what happened with the tax bill, with the tax changes. The, the tax hike legislation obviously was very very difficult to places like my state. Right? It was a it raised taxes. Uh, we've got real estate prices, according to Moody, already off. Seven, real estate values already off 7.3 percent. We're, you know, raising taxes on people in my district, as you know, is a huge problem by gutting the state and local tax deduction. So we're, we're fighting back against that. I'm doing it every single day and trying to find new ways to cut taxes for people. But, you know, we've got to deal with that and keep moving forward. And I really think we've got to look at all engines to keep our economy growing. Uh, Congressman, I wanted to ask you just specifically about infrastructure and some of the complaints you're already hearing from Democrats about what, what may or may not uh, take place this evening. The president, at least in the drafts that we've seen, uh, talking about uh, a federal two, adding $200 billion uh, in terms of federal, uh, federal spending on infrastructure, but the idea being that it's going to put some pressure uh, on states to step up and as well as uh, the private sector to step up. Um, some Democrats saying $200 billion, not enough and uh, worried about the privatization of things like toll roads and other things. Um, having said that, the Democrats have long talked about the need for infrastructure. So square that circle for us. Sure, well, I think, and I'm, I'm eager to hear all the specifics as well. You know, I've seen some of the drafts that have come out early, and I don't believe you can talk about a 20% match to the states and obviously put that huge amount of pressure on the states when we're already paying so much in federal taxes, in my opinion. You look at a state like New Jersey, we've been historically getting back in my district 33 cents for every federal tax dollar we've paid. You've got a state like Mississippi that's getting back $4.38. You know, I, I affectionately call those states moocher states because they keep taking our tax dollars. To me, we've got to get a better return to the states that are paying more, like mine, and make sure that we put a bigger injection into 
you know, fixing our roads, fixing our bridges, dealing with that tunnel between New York and New Jersey, finally getting that built. If, if that goes down, you're talking about a $100 million a day loss to the economy. So you can't keep punting this. I'm, I'm eager to see the specifics here. Congressman Gottheimer, I want to thank you for your time today. Thanks really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And Andrew, yep. I should point out, he is bringing Jimmy Drake with him tonight to the State of the Union. He is the father of Darren Drake, who was one of the victims in the Halloween terrorist truck attack here in New York Goodness. City. He's going to be bringing him because he's working on some legislation to try and make sure that truck rental agencies have to share.